Welcome to Twitch Plays D and D. Hello, hello. Yeah, hello. let's get a big cheer. Come on, everybody now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is what I like to hear. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are here live with episode six. This is Twitch Plays D and D, the only D and D show where you get to spend channel points to attack the party. And I, for one, cannot wait to see chat make us TPK. How about you, PCs? Don't you dare. Yeah, that's, Don't that's, you that's dare. what I'm looking forward to. I'm your Dungeon Master Sobi, and this is Twitch Plays D&D Curse of Strahd. As always, we have our fantastic heroes, the awesome Alex, the versatile Victor, and unfortunately, the mesmerizing Maki is in the middle of a giant hurricane in Japan, so she won't be able to join us today, unfortunately. But rounding us out, we have the Jacos Jordan, that means fun. <laughs> <laughs> PCs, can we get an ahoy, it. please? Ahoy! ahoy! Awesome. If this is your first time joining us, then... Get ready for some fun. <laughs> Throughout the session, you'll see polls on screen <laughs> asking about how you'd like our heroes to react to certain situations or how you'd like to affect the story. Type in the number that corresponds to your favorite option and we'll handle the rest. Which brings us to our opening, opening poll. poll! Yay! And with this first poll, we are beaming it in with our minds right here. Hop Hunter, thank you for the resub. Dude, so much appreciation. Yes. Everyone check we out Hop Hunter that. also. He has awesome content. Okay. So, with our poll, which PC should get spooked on their way to Valaki? All right. Well, it seems that chat voted Clement. So thank you, chat. We have many polls ahead of us. But with that, who wants to play some D&D? Yes. Previously on Twitch Plays D&D, you entered the Vistani camp and met a shadow genasi named Ori Nalo. And thanks to chat for spending points to select that name, by the way. She, s she explained that you were in Barovia, a hidden land far from your home. And here, the devil Strahd von Zarevich reigns supreme. Or so they say. You met Taurus, the pirate captain, who told you about the tale of the mad wizard and gave you a useful map. You were then called to meet Madam Ava, the camp's elder, who read your fortunes. She said that the card spoke of a dangerous journey ahead of you, and that if you were to overcome the darkness of what, way, of what lays ahead of you, you would need to find four things to aid you. An unexpected ally, a tome of great secrets, a holy symbol of hope, and a sword of pure sunlight. Ava also gave you individual readings, which caused some emotional flashbacks for Delphini and Roland, and gave each of you some interesting clues about what you seek most in life. After some not-so-great interactions with Ori, the Vistani recommended that you leave, and off you went. With map in hand, you decided to go north. Toward the nearest town, Velaki. But only after exploring Ser Falls, the roaring waterfalls where the mad wizard supposedly fought the Devil Strahd. In the distance, you saw a cloaked figure riding on an open wood wagon. But you decided that Clement could use the exercise and passed up that opportunity. So, leaving the encampment, you travel along the road towards Velaki for some time taking in the scenery of this unknown land. Towering trees whose tops are lost in heavy gray mist block out all but a death gray light. The tree trunks are unnaturally close to one another, and the woods have the silence of a forgotten grave, yet exude the feelings of an unvoiced scream. An old wooden gallows creaks in a wind and a chill wind that blows down from the high ground to the west. A frayed length of rope dances from its beam. The well-worn road splits here, and a signpost opposite the gallows points off in three directions. One, Ser Falls to the west. Two, Ravenho Ravenloft slash Valaki to the north. And three, 
Barovia Village and Serpool to the south from the direction that you came. Across from the gallows, a low wall crumbling in places partially encloses a small plot of graves shouted in fog. Great, you guys walk into the graveyard and you see about 11 or so graves in about four rows, all unmarked, like the resting place for those unlucky enough to have been hung from the gallows across the way. In here, you see uh, some piles of debris and wood, and there is even some uh, in a corner, uh, kind of along the walls, some wooden pikes thrust in the ground at odd angles. And at this very moment, Roland, you hear, what should we do in this graveyard? Shall we pay our respects, or perhaps mock those who have fallen before us? and at least offer a little bit of respect uh, to those who have fallen here. Uh, so uh, I, I, first of all, I, I go up to the graves and uh, I see if there are any any names that I would recognize. Uh, just I, I look across the names. There seems to be nothing written on these graves. And as you approach one of them, you start hearing this very faint scratching against wood. Uh, well, just back off, let's back off, and uh, maybe go towards uh, Tear Falls and just call it a day. Let's just, I, I don't, I don't have a good feeling about this. What's wrong? What do you, what do you see? Um, it just looks I like a graveyard. I can hear some scratching. I can hear some scratching from the ground, so we better back off. It's probably and, a mouse. And with that, I... A mouse? <laughs> and as she says, it's probably a mouse. You hear as a hand comes out right from the ground, grabbing Roland's leg, and you see coming, climbing out of the dirt and the mud of this of this graveyard, four zombies pull up from the ground. Would you all kindly roll for initiative? Don't even get okay, a death save on this. This is terrible. I'm so sorry. That wasn't a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I had some very nice words to say, but, you know, forget that, because instead we're just going to, you know, fight some zombies. Excellent. Um, I would like to kick his head like a soccer ball. Awesome. Let's see it. And, Is that American um, or European soccer? Uh, American. <laughs> yeah, American. Yes, football or football. Um, yeah. Uh, and you land that blow. <laughs> He goes flying back towards the wall, easily the, the five feet there from the from your brute strength. And you see him just get impaled right into this pike. Uh, and you see uh, just guts and, and dried blood start oozing out of him. Not only does he look incredibly wounded, you see him, he can't move from that spot anymore. You see Cheek run out of the, out of the cemetery. And of course it's Cheek. She's been eating her mushrooms once again. And she is just zonked out as she dives for cover and, and hides herself. The two zombies on the far right are going to run over to Clement. And you see them uh, slash with both their hands and go to bite him. Uh, oh one, one on Clement, one on Roland. Uh, warding Flare. So when I see him approach, I'll just raise up my, take my glove off. And raise up my hand, and my hand just shines very brightly in his face as he tries to hit me. That's so awesome. You do that, and you just see him <sighs> scream and um, and totally whiff this attack as he slices in the air, um, trying to hit you, but hitting just where your light is shining. The other one rushes towards you, Roland, and slashes you once with a cloth, shredding some of your clothes. The second swipe misses as you nimbly dodge out of the way. But as you're doing that, it lunges in with a bite right on your shoulder, <laughs> gets you thick there, and it, you take nine, uh, seven points of damage from that. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> All right, and DM is stepping up his game. At this moment, <laughs> Roland, this is not good. I told you we shouldn't have gone into this graveyard. Perhaps you should use your gust of wind. Uh, the, the gust of wind, indeed. Uh, seems like seems like sound strategy. I will cast gust of wind uh, to try and force these zombies 
back up towards the the rear of the gravesite. That sounds great. And as you okay. think of this plan in your mind, you hear, oh, yes, but it wouldn't be a rolling move if you didn't do a haiku at the same time. As I throw forth my gust of wind, uh, I say, blow them away, bros. These guys are pretty bad, man. Kill them all, my friends. <laughs> That's... <laughs> that Perfect. is that is the Roland four second haiku. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was bad. I wonder that how many awesome. sessions it's gonna take before you regret being so good at haikus. <laughs> the thing is, I'm not <laughs> like this. This this character trait was thrust upon me by the damnable chat. You cast it forward, and it pushes those zombies out to the perimeter. Oh, awesome! Nat twenty. One of them fully impaled. You see the pike go right nice. through its head. <laughs> as it falls lifeless to the ground. The other one gets thrown and tossed and actually hits a tombstone, boom, um, and still rolls to the edge of the perimeter there, but does not make it into one of the pikes. Put my hand forward and I say, Svita Plamia, and cast Sacred Flame. Right, you see this light beam up, as uh, you hear, and you just see the, the light pierce through the skin. Some of uh, you see like the jaw fall off this creature from just the impact of this powerful light. And I'm just gonna bring my hammer up high and slam it down into the ground and hope it doesn't get back Let's up. Let's see it. Let's go. Ooh, That's gonna be an eight. swing that and you just, the, the, the heavy weight of it, you're going for such a powerful blow that your precision was just barely off and poof, it hits the ground as it sends Damn. a shock wave towards you all. And at Damn. this point, those zombies up there are looking right at you as two of them, one is crawling on the ground, one is just picking itself up. Uh, the one on the ground just can't reach you as it's clawing at the dirt and it scratches one of your boots just slightly as you uh, kind of give it a kick off. The second one comes towards you and slashes at you once, yeah. dealing five damage as it cuts across uh, the side of your torso. And you hear it give a And there is one impaled, Clement. It is going to try its best right now to reach you. It can't bite you, but with its right hand, the one that's closest to you, it leans out and hits you for three damage as it just Gets your sleeve. Get off, then. Exposed. Get off. Uh, so I, I run back over here and I go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Good. Are you going to distract him? That's a great strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Always the tactician. Two more zombies <laughs> pull out from two more of these grave sites. One is just, its arm is looking so mangled and beat up. You can see the exposed bone through all of it. And they um, are gonna rush one at Delphini and one at Clement. This one rushes towards you and kicks and trips on one of the, on the headstones there and just swings okay. wildly, missing as you dodge uh, the second attack there. Rolls uh, forward towards you, Clement, but it does swing its neck violently, lands it right on your shoulder, and that deals five damage on you as it Ooh. takes a chunk out of your, of your skin. Yikes. Ugh. What? Oh, you... Bastards! Oh, you're gonna burn! Yazuki plumbing And I will cast Scorching Ray. So Let's add the see. one that, that bit me. Just... Okay, the fresh one? Yeah. Fresh, quote-unquote. <laughs> <laughs> Get your fresh zombies here! We got fresh zombies! Mm, Get them. 26 points of damage total. Tell me about this, this triple ray. Describe <laughs> it for us. I'll just point my hand forward and uh, my scars start to burn up to my uh, the middle of the forearm and the three rays they're just mouths that are biting at the uh, at the zombie and they're kind of eating him alive as he burns that is awesome you just see those mouths start devouring the zombie you see it burst into flames as those these jaws these flaming maws seem to almost be consuming different 
parts of it, even though they're just incinerating it and the ash just shoots up into the air. You just see this whirlwind of fire and the next thing you see, phew, the, the, the zombie is entirely gone. It's just ashes lingering in the air. That nice. zombie that just came out obliterated. Nice. Nice. And I will turn towards the other one and say, Come on, you. Let's see what you've got. And you see it just go, ah, That was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they're sentient. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to hit this one on the right and throw it into its friend who is directly north of me. All right, let's see it. Um, so you swing this hammer and you slam it right into the zombie's gut as you just see it like bend over from the impact of this blow and it just hurdles the zombie forward yeah it does so much Eight. damage that actually the the zombie here just cleaves right into two both halves start one's kicking as the other one's starting to claw forward back towards you. I'll yell at them. Let's, I could just see if I can be loud. Um, <laughs> Give me an intimidate check. Intimidation? Yeah. Let's go for it. 24 as well. I I don't think I really know what to say, so I think <laughs> I just try to... Ah! <laughs> She's on my level. Oh, man. <laughs> this zombie rolled a fat 20, and it just looks at you... Um, and, uh, and screams right back at you. It just goes, it tries to imitate you a little bit where it goes, ah! and, uh, oh my God. it shouts so loud that you see its tongue just fall. What, what was a tongue just fall out of its mouth onto the ground and the tongue yes, starts, uh, crawling towards you. <laughs> so gross. With finally this last one. Ooh, swinging at Roland and... Oh my god. <laughs> That's no. not what you want to hear. <laughs> oh no. Oh boy. It uh, got a, a fat 20 over here and it's gonna Ooh. deal... <laughs> shoot, I think this is actually... It's gonna swing at you. It swings once, misses, um, goes to bite you. As you dodge out of the way, you you're, you lose your traction on one of the um, the loose rocks on the ground and you slip and as it does, its second swipe gets you clean in the chest and you take 16 points of damage. And that's zero for me. As oh my God, really? Roland falls to the ground. Give me a, uh, yeah, a death saving throw. That's just a d20. Um, not a four. one. Oh, not, I'm pressed. That is six. So that is one failure. failure. For everyone watching at home, that's three failures and you are dead forever. Is there get... anything chat can do? Can they like pull their points for an extra <laughs> roll or something? If uh, chat, on the D100 table of mysteries, there has a, there's a chance to heal one of the players. Uh, if anyone hey. gets that, I will let it roll on Roland here. As I see him go down, I'll say, no, you don't. Slow voice Selenia in a little bonus action healing word. Eight. And you hear this incantation. You just hear this holy light beam up as Roland, your eyes um, had blacked out. Ooh. The last thing you remember is just the zombie clawing at you and your eyes, <gasps> you wake up and you just see this lumbering corpse over overhead of you, uh, hands bleeding from your own blood as you Find yourself back for life. Uh, Roland, get up. We need you. And I will cast um, uh, Sacred Flame at the one that's right next to me. Yeah. Uh, for Radiant. And you just see this zombie who just moved off uh, from being impaled just fall to the ground and, and part. And this time the parts do not move. Uh, at right. this point, you hear um, Cheek like talking to uh, what you assume is that frog she mentioned last time. And she's just like, oh my god, I just, I cannot believe this is happening right now. I just saw Roland die. <laughs> Seeing my party member fall to the ground, possibly lifeless, even if he did get back up, sends Delphini into a rage. Yeah, it does. Oh, We're yes. We're gonna get mad. Oh. For everyone watching at home, two of our characters have been blessed with chaotic magical energies, which means anytime Roland casts a spell, he rolls... Uh, to see if he triggers an effect on a table of 100 options. Uh, similarly, Delphini, a barbarian, which you wouldn't think ha would have some magical properties, similarly will make a roll 
on, on, on a similar table. Yes, I just dropped that in the chat. It's kind of a, uh, it's a homebrew adjustment to the Wild Soul class. So that's in chat if you guys want to check it out. And uh, this seems to be a trend of Delphini's because as she finds herself getting so rich? angry, seeing her party member fall, she, fa she feels herself getting lighter on her feet and starts to lift up in ah. the air. And Delphini can now fly. Yes. Ooh, love that one. And I am going to bring this hammer down from 30 feet in the air. Yeah, and you just hit this, slam it down into the ground as you just hear bones and flesh ripping and breaking as it falls to the ground. Um, it is now in just a pile of pieces. You see the hands twitching as they start uh, clawing their way towards you. Um, it looks like one in particular is, is coming towards you. I, I kind of try to yell to the rest of my companions. I think we should just get out of here. These guys aren't going down. And swings and gets you with one hand dealing just one damage to you, Delphini. The second zombie here oh, just fails utterly as, uh, as you just see it um, rush towards you so fast it just falls to the ground, um, kicking up dirt and mud onto you. Ha. Coward. <laughs> At this moment, Roland, you hear... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, whoops, wrong one. Ah, if ah, you should burning hands these suckers if you can. I will cast burning hands and at the same time yell, Delphini, get down. Um, what? As, as I, so. well, what are my chances of responding to that in time? We're going to find out with a roll, that's for sure. Great, great. So uh, first of all, uh, here is the roll to see if anything triggers. I got a three. So this triggers could you roll a d100 for me please i'd love to a 29 you all of you just you smell boom, very strong aroma of lavender coming off of roland and it just oh, that's lovely juxtaposes the stench from these <laughs> zombies and the blood guts <laughs> and and you know dried body parts um, of rotted flesh as you just, oh, it's like the, the most pleasing smell to your noses uh, in this graveyard. A little uh, aroma, aromatherapy in the midst of battle. Could give me a roll to Delphini for you. Uh, uh, a dex. dex saving throw? Yeah. I actually love that because I have danger sense, so I have an advantage on effects that I can see. Ooh, that was great. And he gave you a little heads that... up to this as well. Oh! Yeah. Fat 20. Slip fat 20. Oh. Oh Thank my you, Roland. God, you, um, you completely dodge out of the way. But what happens here, Roland, you go to cast your burning hands and, and the spell just feels slightly more unusual than you're used to as you cast the spell and you almost see it, um, appear out of your hands, disappear for a second and reappear. And it seems to have shifted locations slightly as it went over to the right about 10 feet. It's still hitting two of these zombies. And you just see it light them up, both of them, but not the third. <laughs> Delphini was still in this range, but you just dodged completely out of the way, um, even using some of the piles of, of dirt and headstones to give you some extra cover. Roll a six, but I am going to use a fate point to oh, oh, oh. re-roll yeah, for we damage. Go. So uh, do I re-roll the entire damage or um, just one of the You know, it's die? supposed to be one dice. So let's so, do... Let's pick one dice. All right, so one of the ones, um, and let's do this. So it was a D6. So everyone watching at home, the party members yeah. here are using one of our, oh my God, awesome, our house rules, which is fate points. They accumulate these over time, and they can use them to reroll any dice as one of the options. So that was awesome. So now that's 10 damage? 10 damage. All right, Lovely. and you just see both of these zombies <laughs> light up as uh, tell me a little bit about what this looks like because you have killed both of them. Yes, I have. Yeah. Uh, first, I, I look a little bit confused as there's kind of a, pss, as as it just kind of flickers and then goes away and then it comes back at, with just this, this burning rage that just engulfs everything within that 15 foot cone. And you can actually see the northmost zombie. Uh, you can actually see uh, just a shadow of uh, his former self left on the grave to his left. Uh, just, nice. just absolutely just, just 
decimating everything in its path. And with that, uh, I kind of snap my fingers and I go. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to number one arena fanboy for rolling our D100. You're the one who caused his spell to uh, not work quite as intended. There's lots of things that will help them on there, though, but not this one. I don't think that we found anything that would really help so far. <laughs> Just for some, some style points, I want to float a bit away from him and throw this javelin at him and go, I turn to Clement and I go, you see, it still could have been a mouse. How was I supposed to know? It could have been a mouse. It goes right through its entire skull, pins it to the ground, and you just see, as it falls motionless. And with that, with <laughs> the sound effect victory. So I just continue walking southward, and uh, and I imagine that right here um, at at the the intersection, there's just a camera that is facing directly at me, and I slow motion walk right down there as there's as there is uh, just burning graves behind me, and then and then like just like suddenly things speed up, and then you just see you just see you know uh, Delphini just just. And, and it's just like the slow motion of the javelin just going but you know just from this beautiful panoramic view uh, and, and I turn I, I turn back uh, looking back once at our burning remains and I say that's one for the bards <laughs> <laughs> Delphine and Clement you look at Roland and he's almost like walking in slow motion you see him hold up his hands uh, like, like a picture frame as he's like panning through it and when Delphine threw the spear you heard this noise behind you from Roland going <laughs> I kind of look down and I look straight at the camera oh the camera go, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. and then what? Go, many people lay beneath the worms heavy uh, the worm heavy ground be at peace ye fiends <laughs> um snaps snaps for the haiku <laughs> oh no my green screen <laughs> your wait, green what? screen wait no. it looks fine it looks oh and and it's, at this okay. moment <laughs> the world begins to shift out of place behind <laughs> Roland oh, no. he's broken he's literally broken the fourth wall I think <laughs> yeah. make your way up to that back towards that juncture and up towards the falls and as you just start that you hear a creaking noise coming from the gallows more loudly this time and where there was nothing before just a frayed piece of rope now hangs a lifeless gray body and the breeze turns the hanged figure slowly as it fixes its dead eyes on you don't tell me it's me again i've already seen one dead me i don't need to see another one Clement, oh, it's with, Daniel Radcliffe. With, yeah, exactly. And it's <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. With, <laughs> with uh, a scar, a, a, a lightning bolt scar on his face. Oh, but you guys I was look Swiss Army man. a little closer. And Clement, with your, <laughs> with your perceptive eyes, you see yourself hanging from the gallows there. Delphine and Roland, you just see what looks like an unfamiliar man. Was he here before? I don't think he was. Should we cut him down? Uh, definitely uh, not. No, no. Leave. Just leave. Oh, no, that's... Let's go. Let's go. Just leave. Are you okay? Let's go. Just go. Let's... I don't want to be near near this place. Okay. It's okay. terrible. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and um, thank you so much, Rarzor, for the, the D100 roll, because <laughs> what you guys see is a ghostly head <laughs> rolls on the ground. And it passes by you almost like a tumbleweed. And the face, Clement, you see um, you see yourself and Delphine and Roland. You see kind of what looks like that figure, that one hanging there at the gallows. Um, although his face is dead and distorted. Um, and then you see, following after it, a headless body chasing it. And also this ghostly ethereal form as they <laughs> fade away. I hate this place. Let's keep going. Soinks hate like, hey, hey, cheek. <laughs> like we should get the head out of here. <laughs> you guys continue as you veer off what is the main road on this what looks like a lesser trod dirt path that shoots right up toward the rocky waterfall ahead with the loud noise 
of water assailing the rocks below. The path reaches a series of stone steps here that were likely hewn into the granite ages ago. And you see a small campfire with a black cauldron as the smell of rosemary fills your nose. Uh, which is when you hear, You must be new here! Can I get you some soup? It's my best batch yet. And you see... Yeah, sure. You look around. <laughs> <laughs> and you see a handsome man with flowing brown locks bearing a large grin with a thin piece of wood sticking out of his mouth. And with his arms crossed behind his head and his eyes closed, he lays against a tree and calls out again. So who are you? Clement, you take this. He's offering food. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're very hungry people. We, uh, <laughs> we've been wandering in the woods, and uh, we have no nothing to eat, so um, we killed some zombies back there, but those were no good. Uh, soup, you say? The name is uh, Clement Bellum, and these are my fellows. Um, yeah, uh, I'm Delphini. Who are you? And you see him open just one eye, still very Kel Delendi at the service. Uh, sounds like you folks are in need of some good soup. You're either crazy um, to be in these parts, or you're new. And thou look far too dashing to be crazy, I would say. Some would say <laughs> that we are both. Hey, Thank show you. us the soup. Where's the soup? Come on. You've been talking about the soup. Do <laughs> he, I smell uh, anything? He's, Do it does smell really good. He looks happy at your eagerness to, to test it out, and he says, walks over to the pot and starts pouring some soup into some small wooden bowls that he pulls out of a bag. And at this moment, we hear Roland. And at this point, Delphini, you hear mm. the voices as well. As you hear no. Roland, what do you think of this person? Perhaps, what if, should we be friendly with him? Maybe this is an ally. Or perhaps he will slit our throats when we turn the wrong way. Delphine uh, grabs her head and she's like, I ah, no, no, I'm not doing this, no. And uh, she like takes a few steps off and like starts taking some deep breaths. <laughs> I turn to Delphine and go, ha, ha, I recognize that face. I recognize no. that face. You heard it, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh can she hear me too? Oh, no, Delphine, right? Mm -mm. Well. No, uh, uh, hmm? <laughs> I, I don't hear anything. I don't know what you're happening? talking about. And hands one to each of you, um, and you just smell the aroma of, of uh, kind of this warm, delicious, uh, chunky broth, and the and the rosemary fills your nose. And he says, ah, "Yes, trying out a new recipe: uh, potatoes, uh, mushrooms, and a hint of rosemary." And oh boy, rosemary is so hard to get these days. Does it smell funky to me? Uh, uh, is anything off? Because I'm really hungry, but, you know, I don't want to eat poison. Clement, give so. me a perception check. Roll with advantage, because you are a master of food. Oh, Delphini, I'm so glad you can hear me now. Should, do you think we should eat this soup? I smell, I, 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 from the noses of what I see from you guys, it smells great. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to talk to you. She smells the soup. It smells really good. This guy is charming. I think she's going to try it. 23. Clement, you give it a good whiff, um, and you can immediately pick out the ingredients. You smell uh, the earthiness of the potatoes, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the earthiness of earthiness the mushrooms. Of the, mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> the earthiness of the it's rosemary me. and the earthiness. And on closer inspection, this is dirt. <laughs> And it is just, oh, this is the earthiest meal you've ever smelled. It just feels like, oh, it probably came from the earth. And um, and you actually get a few whiffs of some other smells, um, and you can't quite pinpoint them, but you do feel like there's actually some more ingredients in here. Does it feel funky or just like regular food? And it feels a little funky because you normally can identify so many types of food and ingredients. Um, that you feel a little, a little off by this. It's like you're, uh, it's like you have food senses, and you're like, oh my god, my food senses are going nuts right now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing over here? What's your, uh, what's your deal? A young soul eager to make the most out of the cards dealt to me. I own a shop over in Kresk's, actually, and but I like to get out from time to time. 
A little bit of everything we have there at my shop. Uh, next time you're there, I recommend checking out Delendi Wares. This is my, what I call my vacation spot, the noise of the falls. And he closes his eyes, looks up, drowns out all my worries. Plus, most folk don't travel up here, so it's nice and quiet, a great place to meditate and reflect on. Uh, and while he's closing his eyes, I'll just touch, gently touch uh, Delphine on the hand so she doesn't eat the soup. Just Okay, and yeah, you can even give her a little, his eyes are fully closed right now. But something sounds a little off. You, you don't believe that this, you're not of the, of the view that like, okay, this guy's outright lying, um, but something you just feel like you're, you're not getting a good vibe. And with that, with that um, uh, feeling you have from the food that's been like setting your tone, you're just like, I don't, if I don't get a good vibe from the food, I don't get a good vibe from the person. That's fair. Uh, why, don't, why don't people come up here to the falls? It seems pretty. The lands are dangerous. It sounds like you've already met zombies. I have not um, had the occasion of meeting that type of creature, but werewolves, ghasts, shades, you'll see all sorts of here, not to mention the creatures of, the, of him. I was about to oh, say, it must be quite dangerous to travel by yourself then. True. Yes, well, and he glances over, there's a sword stuck into the ground, uh, not, not within reach. Uh, and he glances over at that, uh, and you see it's just beautifully polished, and he says, well, let's just say I can hold my own. And he looks right at you, Delphine, and says, and by the looks of yourself, it seems that you can too. Well, thank you very much. And I, I take uh, one of the bowls, and I set it down on the ground so that uh, Cheek, in her wild form, can can start lapping lapping up this delicious food. So, Roland, and you ate some of the soup, Cheek's having some, and, and Delphine and Clement, you decided not to. Uh, I have so, not. Um, can I, Cheek in her wild form, can I like kind of grab the bag of holding from her? Yes. And actually, as you do that, and he says, ah, a bag of holding is that. Uh, and he looks at Cheek as he's, it seems among a dozen other bags as well. I, I don't suppose <laughs> you'd be willing to sell that bag now, would you? How does 500 gold pieces sound? 500? Well, we are quite fond of this one. It's got, uh, well... It's got important things in it. Not really, uh, not really valuable, I would say, but I kind of open up the bag and I go, hey, and I kind of like emotion, just to check <laughs> on poggers. <laughs> <laughs> and you just see the, uh, for everyone just joining us for, for the first time, we've got a little cute pug in this bag. He just pokes his head out and gives a little uh, shake with his nose and seems to curl right up back in there. Um, Roland, I need you to make a constitution saving check for me. And I have a disadvantage on that because I'm one exhaustion. Ooh, oh, are oh, you? Oh, because you have fallen. Yeah. When Kel is said? not looking, I want to dump this soup in the bag of holding. Okay. Give me a... Uh, <laughs> All over <laughs> poggers. <laughs> Here in your mind, Delphine and Roland, you hear this. Oh, I don't know about this guy. The bag of holding is quite useful. I say we keep it. And I, I mentioned to Kel uh, as I wait to see what my natural one constitution, constitution saving throw does. Uh, oh my I, God. I, I tell him, uh, I tell him, look, this this bag was uh, a oh gift boy. from a dear friend who is now departed. Um, I, it, it holds much more sentimental value than a mere bag of holding might normally. And as you say that, your last word, you say, as it would normally. You don't even finish your phrase as Delphine and Clement, you just see Roland slump over, hit the ground, but you do see him breathing. I I'll get to my feet. My... <laughs> and Kel I'll, says, I'll, Go ahead. Is your friend all right? I'll take out my, my mace. Stay back, you. Whoa, well, now, whoa. Well. And he doesn't even go to reach for his sword. He puts his hands up. Grab uh, Roland. I'll toss him over my shoulder. And uh, I'll say, Delphine, get, uh, uh, get Jake. And I will point my hand at him while I, I'm holding my mace and say, don't you come near us, you. Give me an what intimidation What did you put in the soup? What did you put in the soup? Give me uh, an intimidation. Ooh, that's <laughs> a natural one. So oh, no. bumps it up to a five, but yeah. And the man laughs. <laughs> Look. It's just soup. I, I promise. I, uh, 
Na natural ingredients from the earth. You know, earthy potatoes, yeah. earthy <laughs> mushrooms. Could you yeah. taste, and he asked you, could you taste the earthiness? Oh, I could taste the earthiness. I can make, <laughs> yeah. I can I make you did. taste the earthiness if oh. you just oh. come closer to us. Oh, I love it. it. Give me one more Stay intimidation back. check, because that was so good. That um, was a good one. <laughs> you're welcome to share the waterfall with me, or please be on your way. Give me a persuasion check. Tell me what you've done to them. We've been here for just a couple of days, and now we've already hit a lot of trouble. If you're what represents this land, this land all needs to be purged, but I hope that it doesn't. Ah, oh, that's a four. Fate point, fate point, fate point, fate point, fate point. Fate point, fate point, fate point. point. Yeah, true fate point. I'll use a fate point. Yeah, yeah you will. <laughs> Sorry, uh, re -roll, I was right? talking in my sleep. Uh, <laughs> fate point. You just hear, yeah. fate point, fate point, fate point. Ah, uh, 13. Uh, I promise there was nothing in there. Yes, I, I did throw in some, I'll, I'll be honest, I threw in some extra ingredients I found on the road, but just some things growing by the mushrooms. I honestly did not think that uh, it would be a problem in any way. And give me an insight check. 17. Uh, you tell, you can tell that he's lying about that. I'll give you one more chance. You tell me what you've put in the soup and we'll leave right now. No harm. Oh, oh no why don't fun. you have some? True. Come Look. on, have a bowl of soup. Have a bowl of soup. <laughs> you were quite, you know, you were very hospitable offering us like some soup. peer pressure. But you know what, I'll do mm. you one better. I'll have some of the soup and... I'll leave you be. He stands up and you see him collect. There's, there was just a cauldron there. He kind of picks it up, um, pours one bowl, takes a bite of the soup, takes a second bite. Mm, delicious. Oh, the earthy potatoes is my favorite part. <laughs> and, and quickly he says, well, you know what? I find that I'm not welcome here. And he, yeah, he just, he walks away into the, into the forest. Do you see Narvis is coming? Oh, I've spent the last few years developing an immunity to you. I was thinking the same <laughs> thing, but I didn't want to say it to Iocane Powder. <laughs> Wait, we should have had a Don't bowl. mess with a Sicilian when dust is on the line. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, chat. That was poorly written. We should have had a bowl exchange, and that would have been perfect. Um, up here, it's mostly dirt, rock, some trees, um, and Clement, you do see some scorch marks around. You see some on, on some rocks and some trees in the area. Almost like drops of ink scattered across a beautiful painting. And was that your roll right there? Yeah. You, um, you do find yourself waking up. I, he yes, was trying to drug you. And, what, and, and the three of you couldn't detain him. <laughs> detain him. And I didn't want to why fight him. I'm injured. Him? We came here looking for a fucking wizard. And Is you just let the only person for? that. We... Yes! You as you say, that was not communicated. As leader. you say, fucking wizard, you hear in your mind to Delphine again. <sighs> yes, we came up here for a reason, wasn't that? To search for the remnants of that story. Clement's nose seems to be very useful. Yes. Uh, look. Speaking um, of a lack of communication, what? Roland. What? What is going on here? Uh, what is going uh, on here? You do recognize it, don't you? I'm not saying anything, but I'm just saying you <sighs> and Sheik certainly seem to be having something going on. Is this something that's going to spread to Clement and I? Uh, I mean, has it spread to you? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. But wow, you, two now ones. You're still sleepy. <laughs> you peer at her, Roland, and you look at her, and you not only believe that she's fully telling the truth, but you look at her, and you're like, actually, you think to yourself, I don't think I've ever heard Delphine ever lie. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you know what, Delphine? You're a truthful one. Clement, uh, is, there, is there anything here that seems off to you? Anything out of the ordinary? Uh, all right, I'll have a look around. I'll try to ignore the uh, rosemary soup uh, and the lavender scents. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Clement, give me two perception rolls. And we're going to do one for your eyes and one for your nose. 16 and an 18. 
continue to to look and survey the area delphine and roland you you see clement and he like puts both his hands to his head he's like like gazing across the scene here like some master investigator what fills your nose is just this refreshing uh you know airy smell of the, of the fresh water being kicked up and um you with that you make your way towards the mouth of the waterfall and with your visual perception you do see by there where there's a large rock right by the mouth and it looks like there's one of the largest scorch marks there by the woods you go to investigate and see um not only do you see some claw marks on some of the woods um you get the light smell uh, from this distance of some dried blood as well i was gonna say so i i move up to look at the scorch mark and uh see if i can tell uh, does it seem natural or arcane or um you know otherwise man-made in nature from the look of how large it is you do wonder if it was magical and roland um you're right by that mouth of the water um which catches your eye is this small black piece of metal and it looks like right at the mouth of the waterfall there's a little metal stake that's driven in there with a little piece of rope on it Yes. Uh, it's like almost right at the edge. It's almost hidden and wedged in between two rocks. And the rope was being pulled into the waterfall. As so where you had to we, pull it out of out of it. Uh, to see maybe if there's like an opening or a cave or something like that below us. Yeah, and give me, um, give me an investigator perception. I'll take you there. Ugh. God, I hate this exhaustion. Four. <laughs> oh, I forgot you're exhausted. Yes, I am. Um, oh boy. And uh, the water is just too strong here. You're not seeing much. Again, uh, to paint the scene, that large lightning bolt scorch mark is, is right next to this stake. Yeah, uh, I'll just say, um, uh, I would hate to have uh, voices in my head, you know. That would be terrible. <laughs> Uh, it sure would. <laughs> yeah, so, that would be awful. <laughs> uh, there's dried blood, you say. Uh, can I try and uh, taste it and see you if sure it's can. human? Yeah. Mm. Ooh, that's a nice. 25. You taste the <laughs> nice. blood. Immediately, you can tell that this is the blood of an orc. You would say that it's maybe just a few days old. This is an orc. Gross, this you can was just taste that. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's I don't even want to know milk. how you know that, but all right. <sighs> Let's try this. And and I pull out my hempen rope. Oh no, what is he trying? I pull out my hey. hempen rope and uh, start tying a knot around the stake. <laughs> uh, I, I remove the old, the yeah, old yeah. Uh, rope and tie a new knot uh, as sturdy as I can. Delphini, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, could you pull out that hammer and give this a good whack? Just make sure that nice. the stake is really driven in there. Are you sure about this? Yeah, and give, uh, me give it a, a whack. <laughs> Let's do an attack roll. Um, but you can easily <laughs> hit a, a stake in the ground. So this is just a little bit more to determine your strength. So I guess we it can... splinters into a million pieces. <laughs> <laughs> the, Natural the twenty. Waterfall, sorry, twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was eleven, half. fourteen. And slams that stake right sturdily into the ground after you tied that rope in. Uh, I, I'd say that uh, between the three of us, we should be able to pull you up if necessary. Um, uh, what what would you say, Delphine? Uh, and she kind of like cracks some knuckles and just goes, I hate this, but all right. And, and I guess uh, she ties one end to her waist just to have like kind of an anchor point. Good call. Nice. And uh, starts to grapple down this waterfall, I Let's guess. Let's see an athletics check as you just hear the voices. Oh, this is definitely not going to go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to you. <laughs> we'll be friends soon. I don't know about that. And athletics 18. Woo, nice. 18. You wow. firmly finding the perfect footholds and you have an excellent grip on this rope. Descend slightly. And as you get... A little bit further, you're splashing into the water and it's sort of pushing you back and forth, this very powerful waterfall. As your head gets dunked in and out of the water, give me a perception check. All right, 14. 
you're swinging again in and out of the waterfall and you do see um inside there certain rocks and ledges that you could you certainly stand behind the waterfall um out of reach of, of any of the water there's no cave it does not go any further um i'm gonna try to swing my way that onto the ledge just to see yeah you, Get a break um, from the water. Let's do an athletics check. All right. Oh, boy. We're really pushing fate here. 11. Yeah, you, you succeed as you swing over and you catch the ledge, still safely tied around your waist uh, with a rope. And on here, give me um, give me a uh, investigate or perception. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to use a fate point. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fate point. That's Sweet. a 16, though. So that changed it dramatically. You but, see rune symbols etched in this area. Um, okay. Clearly some kind of, of spell here. Uh, and actually, give me one arcana check. Oh, <laughs> we'll see about that <laughs> with Delphini. <laughs> if only your brother were here. Exactly. You 13. recognize this as very similar to the spell that Alatar casted, which was uh, way back when in episode one when you guys were teleported. Oh, a teleportation kind of spell. <gasps> Interesting. Delphini, um, what I... do you see down there? Oh, get back up there, Prisa. <laughs> I turn to Clement uh, and I say, did you of... catch that? Yeah, she says a <laughs> teleportation circle. <laughs> <laughs> you pull her right back up to the mouth of the waterfall and untie her. It sounds like your, your wizard of law dove down into the falls and teleported out of here. <gasps> oh, good call. Good call. I love it. I love it. At this point, as you guys start talking, you have well surveyed this area and you do look around. Um, you see... From up here, it's actually quite beautiful. And you realize now that as some of the clouds have shifted, you're able to see quite far from this fairly chilly vantage point. You peer north and you see a small path that's carved into the snow-peaked mountains ahead that winds through the area like an earthen snake. The mountains pierce into the gray sky like massive icicles. And from here, you can also see to the north further. Th if you went down that path, you could see what looks like a large town with a mighty wall around it. Ah, it seems we have some options in front of us. We could take this mountain pass to the north or we'll go back. Delphine, sure do you is. hear anything? Hmm? I mean, <laughs> I hear the waterfall. Uh, yes, she can hear me. She's just pretending. Uh, Delphine, what do you think we should do? I mean, this mountain pass seems as though uh, it might be a shorter route, but uh, then again, we know the main road. Uh, do um, you have, I don't know, anything telling you one way or the other where we should go? Delphine, the mountain pass looks cool. Get it? It's snowing there. I do like snow. I mean, I don't hear anything. I just hear the waterfall. <laughs> um, maybe the mountains look kind of interesting, though. It could be pretty. <laughs> Uh, Just, so with that, I, I'd say, yeah, let's let's press forward to this uh, snowy mountain path. You venture down this narrow pathway, which exposes you to the chill gusts of wind that sweep through the ravines of this area. The path itself ranges from two feet in width at times up to five feet. Um, and occasionally you find yourself clinging to the mountain wall peering down to unknown depths obscured by the mists of this forsaken land and just beyond this point the path splits one going downward and one uh the downward one is much narrower from what you can see but roots and jagged rocks likely uh will be obstacles in front of you the other pathway goes up and it's much wider but the winds up there seem much stronger and this time clement you start hearing just very faintly in the back of your head this echoing voice. Oh, it seems we have a grave decision, up or down. Uh, I think mm. I'm pretty tired and pretty injured. Um, La -da 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 -da. <laughs> I would say, um, take the high road. I'm gonna give Clement a look and, and move on forward towards the high road. You go up and the, and the snow starts to get a little thicker up here as, as the path continues, starting to wind up and down. 
Um, and in one area, you're quite exposed, getting to one of the peaks. At this moment, a mighty wind rushes in with the force of almost a powerful god blowing on a soup that's just too hot. And <laughs> everyone, make strength saving throws. Roland, you brace yourself, um, hold, grasping on one of the rocks as you uh, uh, withstand this force. Uh, Cheek's right behind you and does the same. Clement, did you roll a nine? Yep. And Delphini, a 10? That's technically a 17 with my cloak. Uh, you look at Delphini, she's not even like uh, bracing herself. She just actually continues to march forward, but <sighs> the wind kicks up and Clement, you find uh, the wind just crashing into you as you hold your ground, but soon you feel uh, the feet, your feet below you slipping as the ice, as the snow is melting, revealing some small loose rocks that cover this hey, pathway. Hey, hey, hey. And I need you to make a deck saving throw to see if you can catch your balance. Can I grab him? <laughs> is Clement, were you right behind yeah. Delphini? Oh, yeah. What's the, okay, if that's the real answer, then I will give, De Delphini, you can make a dex throw as well to see if you can react very quickly. 19 with my cloak. <laughs> Five for me. <laughs> and you see Clement slipping. He falls, knocks his shoulder on the ground. You take two damage. You find yourself right at the edge of this cliff, falling back, and thankfully Delphini reaches in and and grabs you and stabilizes you. But you, uh, with that roll, you were gonna fall off that cliff, my friend. Oh my God. <sighs> I'll just... I think perhaps oh, we should me. all hold hands in a, in a little line. Just uh, pull me up, pull me up. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, going forward, should we perhaps uh, do like a like a kindergarten train of people roped together? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, tie us all together with these ropes so that uh, one losing their footing may be held up by the other three. Yeah, or maybe one losing their footing will pull everyone in the. If one of us doom. dies, we die together. <laughs> Perhaps uh, oh. we all just link arms. Oh, okay. Let's do rope, maybe. Or... Yeah, sure. And you continue down the narrow path as snow and wind is kicking in your face. Uh, you hear the. You see that the snowfall uh, lightens slightly, and you hear. You. You hear. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> we are the Treesome Trio, master inventors of machine and riddle from the forest of Berez. We make our homes in the trees and our coin with much ease, for none on the ground can reach the mind of we three. Declare your names and we shall do the same. I'm Delphini. What? What are you? Uh, you may call me Roland. And you see, uh, you look up and you see that there's a single tree growing from a crack in the mountainside. The bitter cold here has plucked all of the leaves from this now barren piece of wood. And you see the three folks in this picture here, and you hear uh, one of them, uh, the, the bottom most, say, Introducing Harafel the swift, nimble fingers and nimbler feet. Make me most elusive. None can catch me. That is conclusive. The second one says, Yanafel the clever, and I'm at my own pleasure, for none could ever weather my wit, nay the lesser crack in pressure and terror from this weather without measure. The storm of their better is treasured letters written by my feather. And yet none could hold match to the greatness of our leader, wiser than a sage and stronger than the devil's rage. Tremble at the might of Herafel, Yanafel, and Greg! Greg! <laughs> it seems you found yourself in quite a predicament. With a snap of my finger, I'll cause a rock slide that will linger. So take one more step if you wish to fall to your depth. But we are fair and just. Answer our riddles and we won't turn you to dust. Greg! He says. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well said, Greg. So, travelers, do you accept the rules? Um, uh, see Delphini start to sweat and she's like, I'm just not good at riddles. And I'll say, well, you fear nothing, eh? How about fire? Oh, give me an intimidate check. 
Oh, oh my god. Fat 20. Fat 20. Can we get some fat 20s in the chat? Fat please? 20s in the chat, please, everybody. Oh fat my 20. god. Scaring the little gnome people. Um, Greg doesn't look phased by this. The other two look uh, pretty terrified as you just lean forward and you even create a little bit of light or flame in your hands as you do this. Okay, 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 okay. calm down. Look. Answer our three riddles and we'll let you pass, okay? What do you gain okay. from us answering these riddles? We could riddles? try to just... Well, you see, if you answer correct, then we are pleased in your answers of riddles. If you answer incorrect, we get all your stuff. You'll be dead. Where is your collection of stuff that you've gotten from other travelers through And here? you hear him interrupt. But wait a minute, that, that last part didn't rhyme. Do it again. <laughs> all right, okay. <clears throat> answer our riddles three and we will let you be. You must use your intellect to answer each correct, for if you answer incorrect, it will be your bones we will collect. Ah, uh, much better, much better. And I'll say, uh, hey, uh, before you just <laughs> said, if you, we answer your riddles, we can go. Not answer correctly, so. The two look at Greg, and he mind. says, Greg! <laughs> you heard him. Answer correctly. Like, First riddle. It sounds like we don't have a choice, yeah. I, I spy with my swift and wise eyes something. And he looks around, um, <laughs> gazing at the landscape. Grays. And it sounded like he was saying gray and trying to rhyme with eyes. I go, is it not the mountain? You give me uh, perception checks. 10 perception uh, 10. and 12 inside. Roland, you're not quite, there's a lot of gray around. There's the mountains and the sky and the rocks. Uh, Delphini and Clement, or Delphini for sure, you saw his gaze look upward towards the sky. Clement, you can tell just by looking at this guy that maybe he's not the brightest of the trio. <laughs> uh, looking up, do I see anything gray perhaps? Um, and the, all the, there's just clouds in the sky. They're all gray. So here's what I'm thinking. We play the little game and perhaps we make it past. And then if they even threaten to start snapping, I'll just rip the tree out of the mountain and they'll die with us. <laughs> I think it's the clouds. Is it the clouds? They huddle together. Correct. It's the clouds. Lovely. Yes. Great. Great. All right. All right, so uh, what do we get now that we have answered correctly? Well, you there are three riddles, as there are three of us. Did you not hear the rhyme? Answer riddle three, something, something. Uh, <laughs> yes, question two is, did we not hear the rhyme? Yes, we did. Answer two, correct. They uh, look at each other and huddle up. Uh, give me a uh, give me a persuasion check on that, Roland. <laughs> That's fantastic, Roland. <laughs> oh crap, my my disadvantage. But even it's so, still seventeen. Still a seventeen. You just hear them bickering, um, bickering amongst each other, um, <laughs> and and they look back. Very well. That's fair. Okay. That is fair. You have yes. answered two of our riddles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Time for the last one. And they both look at Greg as he. Uh, looks forward and says, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> what do I understand from that? At this moment, the trio laughs. Uh, you hear them all laughing, and you hear Greg say, <laughs> I could speak this whole time, and of course I will do it in rhyme. Here is my riddle. It cannot be seen. It cannot be felt. Cannot be heard, cannot be smelt. Lies behind stars and under hills and empty holes it fills. Comes first, follows after. Ends life, kills laughter. What is it? Space? Uh, I, 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 no, I no, 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 not this no, 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 I, no, I, I, this, <laughs> this is me. This is me uh, monologuing amongst the group. I say space. I think it's darkness. Lies beyond the, the, the stars, uh, ends laughter. You hear the whisper um, in your mind. Oh, this seems like the hardest one, but Greg going back there, Roland, and tricking them. What do you think the answers are? Uh, I heard someone say darkness, but part of me also wonders if the answer is bananas. Bananas. 
I mean, um... Hmm. This entire situation is bananas, if you ask me. This has, it is a bit bananas, yes. Did you say uh, bananas? Oh! Delphini! Huh? Delphini, you just responded to them! No, you <laughs> said bananas. I was listening no, to you. No, I did not say bananas. <laughs> you, you said bananas. You did say bananas. You, you said did bananas. say bananas. Clever, don't, get, thank you. don't give me a craving. I, think, I mean, come I on. You, you know I'm yeah, hungry. Yeah, I think you definitely brought up bananas. What about bananas? <laughs> Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. Time. Um. <laughs> Maybe it's time. <laughs> well, so we've narrowed it down to time or bananas. <laughs> Maybe it's darkness. <laughs> so, I don't bananas, think it's I mean. bananas. Okay, yes, so... You must say bananas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let me tell uh, you why. No. Yes, why? Can you hear a banana? No. Can you feel a banana? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. If we just ignore half of their rhyme, <laughs> could a banana not fit in an empty hole? <laughs> if you threw a banana in the air from the right perspective, would stars not be behind it? <laughs> In my experience, bananas tend to start laughter instead of ending laughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you eat it too fast, I mean, you can end your laughter pretty quick. Uh, you know. Why are we entertaining this? Um, I cannot. Okay. And, and, I, I mean, and, I, and I turn to them and I say, "Bananas! This is fucking no. bananas!" That is. They all huddle together. Incorrect. <laughs> Are you out of the mountain? I, I, one of them uh, pulls their fingers up and gets ready to snap their fingers. Did you say you're going to run over and pull the, the tree out of the mountain? If they're going to snap their fingers, I'm going to... They raise their finger <laughs> up and they haven't snapped it yet. And you're like... I'll and do it. I, I bring a small flame into my hand as well. I'll uh, also I'll say Judah and my eyes go and they're all the color of the flame and I will... Again, make my voice louder and say, Do not snap your fingers or you will burn. Give me an intimidate check. Oh boy, something crazy is going to happen here. It's an eight. They look at Delphini who asks, Is it time? Another incorrect answer. You all die. Nice knowing you. And they snap <laughs> their fingers as you rip the, the tree out. You do this and the tree goes flying. Give me an athletics check, Del Delphini, on this and a you dex check it. to see how fast you react. A athletics is a 20. Beautiful. Yeah, so you cleanly rip this whole tree out of the ground here, but you don't do it fast enough. Their fingers still snap as you now hear the trembling of rocks overhead. And you look at them and you see them all slap their hands together and they disappear in a cloud of smoke as above you, the rocks begin trembling and you now see a wave of snow shaking in the distance. I'm gonna need everyone to run. Everyone needs to make a deck saving throw right now. I can't oh. believe you made us say bananas. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, cast Gust of Wind straight up above us. Uh, so I, I want us to kind of run together and I'll be casting that straight above us to try and uh, create a, sh a shroud. Give me just a flat d20 roll on this, Roland, um, to see how effective it's going to be. And everyone 17. else rolled uh, a 7, an 11, and Delphini, um, you're taking, you take four points of damage as the rocks are hurtling. Um, Roland, so... So I, I actually rolled a nat one, but I'm gonna use another fate point to re-roll that. Yeah, sure. Uh, not much better, but at least it's not a critical but fail. It's not uh, a critical it's fail. We will take it. A critical fail. This this series, this event was not supposed to happen. Um, so a critical fail right now would not be good. Delphine, you take four points of damage, uh, yeah. and and Roland, you take three points of damage as these rocks are just hurtling, hitting you guys. Uh, you continue forward, Roland, you, you shoot this gust of wave out, trying to push as much. 
straight above us. Yeah, is what so I'm right doing. whereas everything's coming down on this pathway, you're just shooting that back up as rocks and snow are flinging everywhere. You see that tree falling down into the abyss that Delphini you toss, and you're running forward. I need everyone right now to make a strength saving throw. As the snow is coming in, it's actually forming around your gust of wind and starting to encircle you guys as you're having to tread through now this My thick God. snow. I got a and two. Well, oh. minus one, so a one. So that's going to be 22. <laughs> Feeny, you're in the lead here. And you, uh, thankfully, with that amazing roll, you're kicking some of the snow out of the way, almost like a snow plow opening up the way. Um, Yeah, chat, can we get an F F for that tree that fell? Big (laughs) F. Fuck that tree. Don't F F the tree. Fuck that tree. (laughs) Yeah, give it F the tree. Roland, if it weren't for your gust of wind right now, this would not be looking good, but it's still incredibly dangerous right now. There's more rocks are coming through. I'm going to need one more deck saving throw from everybody. And we are uh, still tied together, first off. Yes. We are still yeah. roped together. You are tied together. And actually, roll and roll with advantage. Uh, roll normal with this one. Uh, with your gust of wind, you're certainly protecting yourself right now from a lot of these rocks. That's uh, 13. As we're running, I would like to keep an eye on the mountainside to see if there are any, like, little crannies we could duck into to, to see if we could hide from this, um, I don't know, rock slide. A rock falls, and you just hear the whimper of, it, of, a, of her wolf. As it grazes her back, uh, you see her take uh, five points of damage. We'll let her know. Delphine, you're gazing around. The snow is too thick, and the, and the, the rocks are just obscuring your view. Um, you don't think that there's any way but forward through this. Things are just getting nuts right now. Um, I'm going to let you guys do one more round of anything you want. Um, and then we're making a, a final roll here for something crazy that might happen. I don't uh, like that. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so okay, uh, so I, I also cast shield then. <laughs> this um, transparent, shimmering shield around Roland now as his hands are still shooting gusts of wind out, trying to clear your way the best he can. Uh, You're going forward, and the mountainside is on your right. And, the, and this avalanche and everything is just hitting you on your right as you're darting forward. Far ahead, you're still heading in the right direction as you see the area start to descend out from the mountains back into kind of the grassy plains that you were used to out, or in the forest that you were used to. On the ground, is it snow that is slowing us down? Uh, yes, the snow is slowing you down. Uh, for those who've All been, right. um, it didn't really phase Delphini. Good call. Clement. All right. If, so, if you want to yeah. tackle that, I'm... I, you know, I'm, I can take any fire damage, and I can keep us moving. Lucia Sphera, and I will <laughs> cast Flaming Sphere. I will make a sphere with my hand, and my hand starts to glow, and then I will just blow it forward, and it will go up towards go past Delfini and land on the ground and move forward with us. Immediately, it uh, melts this, a lot of the snow right in that vicinity, clearing the path for you. <laughs> And I'm going to put all of my strength into tugging all four of us along. Give like, me, no matter what they're doing, I'm going to keep us moving. This is awesome. Give me an athletics check. Uh, wow, okay. you guys stepped up. 15 on athletics. All right, that will do it. Here's what we're going to do. Again, honestly, I did not think that this was going to happen and you guys were going to answer bananas. And <laughs> we have one of the craziest rolls ahead of us right now. You guys dominated with this. Roland shooting wind out to knock out the rocks in the snow, clearing a path. Delphine, you're chugging along. This is barely phasing you individually, and you're pulling the weight of these folks. And Clement, you just cleared the snow, which was really slowing you and Roland down. If you guys hadn't done the right stuff, we were going to roll a d20, and one person was going to fall off this cliff on a 1 to 16. On a 17 to 20, they, they were, I have written down here, on a 1 six to 16, they're going to die. On a 17 through 20, they will live. Because of your amazing actions, we're going to change that to a 50-50. You guys are also tied together, so we'll have to factor that in. <laughs> okay. So we're going to roll a d20 right chat. now. I'll go ahead and put I would like to implore the chat really quick chat, to yeah, remind guys- them <clears throat> that they can give a PC a fate point. Yes. So that would be and useful at this moment. I, I also would like to mention oh, that man. all of us still have at least one fate point, 
And it says yes. that we can yeah. re-roll any die. Any. We're gonna roll this this sucker. We're, what we're gonna do here is on a, on a one through ten. Four. Roland, you're in the back. <laughs> on a one through ten, you <laughs> you fall off. And on an eleven through twenty, you hold your ground. Someone just gave us a fate point. <gasps> Who did? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. Thank you. Uh, Who's nervous? Was it <gasps> Narvis, thank you. Yeah! Yeah! Wow. Woo! All right. Here we go with this roll. Oh! oh. Fate point! All right. We're using that fate, fate point that, that, that you is just my, got. That is my third and final fate, fate point. I'm going to let you guys use one fate point on this, and you just used it. And yeah, Narvis, we'll just right. say that fate point you bought right there was just used right there. So you guys can maintain the fate points that you exist. And get no. uh, We're rolling I'm one so more d20. Mm. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> oh, my God. Yes! Yes! As you Narvis, see, my boy. this large rock hurtle down. <laughs> It hits you, Roland, and you are lucky that you have that shield up because it's only going to deal three damage to you. Um, I can take it. But this rock <laughs> was going to about to hit you so hard and knock you off. The next thing you guys notice is the rope in between uh, Roland and 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 Clement snaps. And now you guys are in pairs uh, from the force of this rock. It was going to take him all the way down, but you brace yourself from this hands out shooting wind and you carry on forward through the avalanche and we're gonna end it there folks yeah buddy oh my god oh my god hell yes oh my gosh wow that had to be the yeah, coolest use of a fate point that's insane that's so, insane so i i want you to know that you know we're each playing characters and we are role playing. That pop off of that yeah was one hundred percent genuine. <laughs> like I am <laughs> My God. Oh, that was so good. My soul I, will I really not be able to rest until I know was the answer darkness. The answer was yeah. darkness. It was. <laughs> Marvis really saved the day there. Intense. Yeah, yeah. can we all get a huge shout out for Narvis. That was an amazing use of a fate point. Wow. Way to go, buddy. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was an absolute blast. I hope you loved this answer. Arc Astral is totally right. No one expects the banana. That no. might be our yeah. catchphrase yeah. here from now on. Oh. Woo! Bye! Well, all right. Bye, 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 I love everyone. each of you in chat. <laughs>